Right. Um, I'm gonna request to go over um, car interiors because it seems to be um, a subject that quite a few people struggle with. So, with that in mind, um, I'm just gonna sh show you the basics. I'm not gonna go into rendering. Um, basically, I'm gonna show you what the process is, and it's the same as exteriors, as in. It all boils down to perspective, the, the absolute basics of drawing in perspective. So, um, just to save time, I've just done this sketch uh, to show you perspectives and how they should relate. So, i.e. this area is the dashboard, that kind of indicates the roof line, whether it be a sedan or a coupe or whatever, it doesn't matter. <coughs> then you've got uh, whatever the shape of the dashboard does and the door opening or the shut line that or the sill to the actual opening of the car so you probably have um, there'll probably be say if this is a sedan a B pillar here sort of thing so then that would be kind of your first door opening whatever the shape is I'm not going to go into the design of thing so orange lines as you probably should, well you should know, they are perspective lines and they all converge to a point well far off the page. So these points would go, well, probably about here somewhere. Then the same in this direction here, all go to a point and then they dictate where your sill line is, where the other sill line would be, as in the angle and the relationship between this line and this line, so they're not parallel, there's an angle between them. Okay, it's just absolutely basic stuff. So then the center line on the floor would be somewhere in between the two. Again, going to the perspective line, the grid, the point, whatever you want to call it. And then the you gotta you gotta think about it, and um this is applies to all forms of drawing, even artists. You've got to line up the points that should line up. So, i.e., if a car is symmetrical, it means the key points in the car are going to be symmetrical. So, your door line needs to be the same. And you use your perspective lines to judge where the start and end points of certain things are. And then that also gives you this line here. And then a perspective line gives you that point there. And you, you build it out of perspective lines, and you essentially you're building a grid. Now the, the trick is you want to get to a point where you don't have to draw these lines, because this is a purpose for you to learn. And once you get into it, and the more you do, and the more practice that you do, you eventually get to the point where you don't have to draw the perspective lines because you see it. Because this is all about training your eye to see this sort of stuff. So like this point here is in the same position as that point there. So there's a line between the two, following the perspective. And then, depending on what the shape of the thing does, a pillar point is going to be in the same place. Again, a line, perspective line. Then, base of the windscreen, whatever the shape of the windscreen is, and the midpoint is going to be tangent to the curve. No matter how curved it is, it will there be a tangent. That's where your centre point is, right bang in the middle of the curve. Now, obviously, you can do the same thing down the centre. So your perspective lines are going to be equally spaced, equally angled. Um, they basically got a array. Out. So if, the way to imagine it is, if that's your a point from a series of lines will fan out. Oh, that's a bad line. They want to be equally spaced and array from that point, and it's the same the same thing. These need to kind of be equally spaced. So imagine these all meeting at that point. They're all equally spaced. So um, that is the basics of how you start to build this sort of thing up. So the the next tricky part is you got to also bear in mind proportions. So I've seen a lot of people do sketches of interiors with dashboards that are about four feet high or 
really wide and nothing to them and also where a lot of people fall flat on their face is how they draw a seat in here and they have to, you've got to take in consideration the width and proportions and the size of the centre console if it has a centre console bear in mind it depends on what your design is but I've, I see so many people um, where they draw on this side a bolster and a seat and then they draw the um, the top surface of the centre console where it would be. Now this point in perspective is below this point and I see so many people draw this bolster, draw the centre console and then draw that same bolster on the other side of the centre console which will then imply that that is actually lining up to that point there not this point here and then that is also higher than this surface here so that's where a lot of interior sketches fall flat on the face because the seats are done wrong and what you've got to understand and what you've got to learn and what you've got to realize is um, the relationship between the highest point in the seat and the center console no matter how, however you design it, if you design the center consoles below the, the highest point then it's fine, you are, you are obviously going to see that but obviously if your center console, this surface here for example is higher than your chair, in other words you can see this surface here you're not going to see the highest point in the chair on the other side because the, this center console is going to go back down and then you're going to have your, the seat somewhere behind here which is behind this surface and this is something you need to you need to grasp. Basically, it's in, you've got to imagine it and picture it in three dimensions. And this is where I would encourage anyone who's um, doing industrial design, product design, automotive design, even art. I'd encourage you to do some form of three D three D work, whether it be blue foam or clay or three D software. Because the more that you do in three dimensions, the better your understanding of where you see things in relation to other things and what things will look like in three dimensions. So if you were to go and do the seats in here now, <clears throat> say if I want uh, a centre console in there somewhere, and then there's going to be a point where it goes down and it meets the floor and then it comes across and then it's going to do the same on the other side so if I do a dotted line to show you this line here has to follow perspective okay basics 101 so that is what this is going to do okay and with that in mind uh, you want to do front edge of the seat wherever that may be it's also going to line up with the front edge of the next seat as well and then you're going to do whatever the seat shape looks like and then you've got to bear in mind if you've got a sill to the actual door because the door isn't paper thin it's going to have some kind of structure to it so there's some kind of thickness and normally when you open a door you've got a sill or the part where it has a nice bit of trim where you, your foot stands on you know what I mean uh, they're basically called door sills and then you've got the actual floor and then you'll have some kind of point where the seat's mounted to then you've got the actual thickness of the seat as well and so I'll see a lot of people do really wide seats and obviously it throws it all out and it doesn't look right because people do their seats like this and then you would be like why does that look so wide that's just strange so you've got to bear that in mind as well because in the, the day if if the top of your seat is this high here it's equally the same here so you've got to bear in mind what happens down here okay so in reality you've got track from there and then you've got whatever underneath the actual seat and then more often than not the actual seat packing sits on the frame of some form whether it be plastic cladded or whatever or even you've got you know seat controls down here or something 
and then you kind of want to go up into the back rest and your head rest and whatnot. And again, same principles, but we'll ignore that for now because let's get the ba seed bases right. So here you can see that that point there is <clears throat> below the center console. So I'm not going to see this edge on the opposite side because the center console is here. Okay. Uh, just a tidy, this is getting pretty messy, so just to tidy this up, I'm just going to throw black surface there, just so it's a bit more clear as to what's going on. Um, so that line again is here, and then bear in mind the height from the door sill. So if this is going to be X high to here. It's going to be within perspective, it's going to be the same. So you're probably looking at something like that. And then the back of the seat, whatever the back of the seat is, perspective lines again. So you, you can see how everything's always built out of perspective lines. So when you draw it, if you're doing it analog and you, you're doing it on a piece of paper and a pen or whatever, get a ruler or line, put your pen on the perspective lines and just go through every point that you need to get right. So you see, it's just lay your pen across the sheet of paper so you've got a straight edge to use as reference. And literally just go through the whole thing and just check every single point that needs to be symmetrical is symmetrical. Um, Okay, so that's how you check that the seats are in the same place, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's not particular. don't take this as an actual view to do an interior, because it's, it's almost what they call bathtub sketch. It's, um, it's not particularly dynamic, it doesn't look particularly good, but I'm just showing you the principles of perspective and how you set up an actual interior sketch. So... That would be how you line up your seats, and then, yeah, again, it's like a, a doodle. Just if you do a backrest, same principles, perspective lines all the time. Cannot stress enough perspective lines. So, that is how you go about building up an interior sketch. Now, I'm just going to switch to Photoshop, and I'm just going to show you some of my interiors. and. I'll basically show you. Uh, this one's made out of 112 letters, in case you want to know. So there's all my layers that build up all my um, <clears throat> this particular rendering. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a line tool. So I'm going to press. If you press U, it brings up this tool, but I need to put it on the line tool. And I'm going to put it on pixels. And I'm going to do two, three pixel lines just so you can see it. And I'll do it in orange. And basically, I'm going to go through this now and check it with perspective lines so you get an idea as to what's going on. So I'm um, on a new layer, and if that's my first line there, through the middle of the headrest and on top of the vents, and then say top point of the bolsters on the seat, the base of the seat. And then the actual I'm just marking select and holding shift now just to move this. So as you can actually see, even the professionals get it wrong. So this one in the middle here is slightly off by a few a few degrees. It's off, but hey. Um, so we, we still get it wrong. So it's not the end of the world. And again, kind of centre line of the car. I'm going to go right between the two seats on the top of the partial shelf here. Now obviously, this, is, this dips down now. So I've got this distance here. to take into account and the whole thing gets lower and lower and lower. But you get an idea 
Now the trouble is with that, with this interior actually, um, it's not as straightforward as if you were to try and put a perspective line not knowing what this looks like, you'd assume that your perspective line is this. And don't be fooled into thinking that. Because this actual interior, and I'll show you in a second, isn't actually square and normal like a normal car, which is the, the next point now. It all depends on your design. So in plan view, um, plan view is right in case you're wondering what I've just done there. If you do a letter and you hold Alt and click on the little eye, it will highlight just that one layer. Now if I go and select another layer, it won't go back. But if I hold Alt again and click again, it goes back to all the layers. But so like now, if I click on another layer, it won't work now. But anyway, um, so in plan view, just to show you what that looks like before I actually show you an actual uh, image of the 3D model. In plan view, and just make this uh, brush smaller, and I'll do a black. If that's this, oh, actually a bigger brush, and if that's the centre line of the car, my actual interior shape is like, uh, not even like that, it's like that. So my perspective lines line up tangent to these edges, as opposed to like the sketch. It'll make more sense in a second. So the my parcel shelf starts about here. I've got the headrest in here, and then the seat goes down like that, and then comes back in, and then goes back out, and then back down here. But also, so if that's a top-down view you're looking at, that's kind of what it looks like, which is why you need to have a good understanding of what things look like in three dimensions. And then the whole thing's really narrow here. Um, and then the base of the, f the floor is about there where that black vent was. And then there's like a door trim is in here. Looking down, top down by the way, but keep in mind it's top down. Okay, so that explained why those perspective lines didn't line up on my sketch and it didn't make any sense because the the side of the car is not straight in that particular design. It's it's all curved. And now I will flick to the actual render. I think it's Alt Tab. No, it's Control Tab. And this is the design. As you can see, it's pretty crazy. Um, so you can see how curved that is. Right. Like, yeah, standard car is like straight. Hence why the perspective lines did not line up. Um, so top down, the, you can see now for yourself what that actually looks like in three dimensions. So that's another thing. So obviously my perspective lines won't really come there. The only thing I could really use perspective lines in that direction would be the um, the actual uh, seats. And here's another dashboard I've done, which is coincidentally that dashboard in there um, on its frame. So this is where um, the art of design comes into it all. And rather than just drawing a, a crappy little box like you, Pete, well, I know at our uni, I graduated country and we were taught box in three quarters almost isometric and you do that and then you put your seats in but it looks crap so don't do that um, you want to make it look dynamic and you want to make it look good so which is where you want to do interesting perspectives same rules apply but you want to make it look good which is where you, you play around with the angle, whatever that is. And then again, you play around with all these angles. Okay, so center line, 
to that game. Oh, whatever. Then the centre line is the actual steering wheel. It's got to be equally spaced. Same principles apply, same rules. Um, show you another one. I'm sure I've got another one somewhere. So then, with all that in mind, if I was to st if I was to naturally start sketching an interior now, I don't necessarily draw the perspective lines all the time. But it also it depends on what I want to show. Like if I want to show that the back of the seats, or the the back row of the interior, or the boot, or whatever you want to show, I because I'm left-handed, I tend to draw this way. Um, if you're right-handed, you'll probably find you'll end up drawing the back of an interior that way. Don't ask me why it works. So I always model and design cars to the left more often than not because I'm left-handed. Um, anyway, um, blabbering there. Um, yeah, so I always try to do something that's kind of interesting. So, and I I tend to not do square. Well, square boxes or square cars anymore. Um, I tend to do quite organic shapes, and but at the same time, not organic. It's organic inspired. But anyway, so I could do some form of seat and so do something interesting with the door opening. Uh, I'm kind of I'm doing muscle memory now. I'm drawing the thing I've just modeled, but you you could play around with it anyway. Um, so maybe it's something crazy. Uh, maybe it's an asymmetric interior. I don't know. You're the designer. Work it out. So I'm just start sketching really trying. To find some shapes, throw some lines in there, just see what happens really, see if you even find anything you, you like or you want. But you always use the perspective lines. Uh, I clearly haven't there, it's clearly wrong. See now I can see that that should be third and forward. And then what are the seats doing? That point needs to line up. These points need to line up. So you just start throwing some lines in, but as you go through it and you start working into it. Just keep an eye on whatever points need to be symmetrical. Obviously, it depends on what you've designed or what you intend to design anyway. Um, but just keep just keep working through it really, and just use perspective lines to actually do it. That's I keep repeating myself really, I suppose. So I'll I'll leave it at that and um, have fun with it. But bear in mind, you're never going to get it perfect or bang on first time because well, if you don't do it every single day of your life, you're not going to be amazing at doing it. Your practice makes perfect. So don't get too worried if it's not perfect straight away. It's, it's a learning curve. And that's why we practice. So I'll leave it at that.